G'day everyone, hope you're having a wonderful Monday. My name's Dan and welcome to another live stream here at the Australian Reptile Park. And I'm gonna be talking about something pretty cool today, some beautiful lizards endemic to Australia known as lace monitors. They're one of Australia's largest goanna or monitor species and we're gonna have a pretty close look at a couple. Um, we're also gonna watch them have a bit of food. Now, the sun's kind of disappeared on us and it's starting to cool off a little bit. So we're not gonna give them too much of, too much of a feed today, um, but they are having a bit of a feed right now on some ribs. So we'll pan the cameras over and catch them quickly uh, before we take the food away. So this is probably something you wouldn't get used to watching very often. And in fact, your chances of actually seeing this live at the reptile park is probably quite small as well because we don't do it all that often. You see, this is what we call a carcass or enrichment feed for our lace monitors. And it's actually how I like to feed them because of the number of goannas that we have here uh, in this pit. We have four males and four females that all live inside this particular pit and all the ones we're looking at right now are our males. All the females are hiding off in the back, but they did have a pretty large substantial feed over the weekend. Because these lizards have just come out of their brumation time, so they've been in kind of their version of hibernation, um, that their activity had decreased quite a bit. They've only really just started waking up in the last four to five weeks and only in the last couple of weeks started to feed. So today will be a fairly small feed. I know it looks like there's a lot of food there, but most of that food I'm gonna feed to our alligators straight after this. So I'll remove the carcass from here, chop it up a little bit, and feed it to some of our larger male American alligators. But why I like to show this is because they can be quite erratic at times, but when you're trying to keep a large cohort of monitors like this together, I've always found that this is the best way to feed them because they're not so erratic and they tend not to bite each other, which is really, really good, uh, particularly for the smaller females trying to interact around the males. Now you would have seen just then a smaller female has made her way over and there's a bit of a dominance thing the big males kind of attacking the food first and then the females are a little bit nervous because of the size of the males she's come over a little bit later um, and even this small one just right underneath me and the cameras that actually is our smallest male uh, he was handed into the reptile park a number of years ago but he's nowhere near as big as the big dominant boys. Now, this time of year, we will see a couple of really cool behaviors. One of those would be mating, where our male goannas will mate with the females, which is obviously good, because then we can produce some eggs, which is great. Uh, breeding monitors is so, so, so great for any reptile keeper, in particular lace monitors. They've got such a long time in the egg, about 10 month incubation time. So see that, look at the power. Um, but also too, you might start seeing some male dominance behavior. behavior. But we have a really dominant male in this pit. He's the one right here where you see there's the three heads together. So the one with the head closest to us with the dirt on it, he's our most dominant male. And even though we do get some combat behaviors in, in this pit, uh, typically they all kind of give way to that particular boy. And he's generally the one that does mate with the females in this exhibit. So he will mate with uh, multiple females inside of this exhibit. Now lace monitors are found in Eastern Australia. They've got a fairly large distribution and they're not Australia's largest monitor species. That would bet title goes to the Parenti, which is from Central Australia. But if you live in Eastern Australia, I imagine you'd be quite familiar with seeing lace monitors. You might encounter them at different points, uh, maybe in a national park and they come over and say hello a little bit. Um, obviously never try and feed a lace monitor and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But why we do these feeds, not only because it enables them to interact with each other quite safely and they all take time tearing their food, if you look at how hard they're working to get the smallest amount of meat off that carcass, they are really working hard. They're using their claws, they're using their sharp teeth, but most importantly, they're using those strong neck muscles. And this practice or this feeding session keeps those neck muscles strong, which is really important for their mobility in particular around their shoulders and around their neck. So they'll constantly rip and tear at food. They're only actually pe um, ripping off fairly small chunks at a time, um, but it's not only great enrichment for them, but also too, uh, it provides them with a lot of exercise as well. Now lace monitors won't just feed on carcasses here at the reptile park. Oh, there's a good shot straight down the hatch. They won't just feed on carcasses here at the reptile park. They're what's known as a carrion feeder, which means they will feed on dead animals in the wild. They're very much a scavenger species. So you could imagine a kangaroo, maybe it was, maybe it was struck by a car, it's unfortunate, but it does happen, goes off to the side of the road. That's a bit of a waste in, in terms of resource and food. Well, not for the lace monitors. You see, they'll be able to smell that rotten carcass. They'll make their way over and they'll start to for feed on that carcass. So that could be a kangaroo, uh, a wallaby, pretty much anything they can get their mouths around. And really, um, they will eat anything they can get a hold of, to be fair, anything that's smaller than them. 
Now at the adult size, they wouldn't really have any natural predators. The main threat to them might be dog attacks or road accidents. I did see a big male lace monitor killed on the side of the road, hit by a car only a few weeks ago. So it is always advised to make sure you keep an eye out for our native wildlife uh, crossing the road. But if they are encountered by people, because we're so big and we can look like a threat, they're not gonna try and bite you or anything like that. What they do instead is they run away from you really, really quickly. So if you're ever walking through the national park and you hear something bailing through the bushes, a lot of the time it could be a lace monitor. But not only will they run through the bush to get away from you, there's another one thing they'll do and that's run straight up a tree. They're very arboreal, they're highly, they are an arboreal species, particularly when they're smaller, the females in particular. So generally the males, you'll typically stay on the ground uh, at this size, in saying that they do climb as well, but the females spend a lot of their time up in the highest points of the trees that are in this exhibit, which we'll so, show you soon. Um, they're excellent climbers, they're really adapted at it. They're quite fast, the way they fling up a tree, and that's another way that they can avoid predation as well. So if they were under attack by maybe a dog, you're very safe if you're a monitor, if you run up a tree in terms of a dog trying to catch you. Obviously when they're quite small though, um, you know, foxes and cats could potentially pose a threat to a lace monitor and climbing up a tree is not necessarily gonna save you against a cat attack. So it's always advised to make sure you keep your cats indoors, particularly not cats roaming around at night because even a really big cat could take down a fairly small uh, goanna. Now I just wanna talk about one little quick story as well. That a few years ago, uh, it was on an island, there was a lace monitor that uh, killed a small uh, dog. But what actually happened, the dog had chased the lace monitor and the lace monitor was simply defending itself. So it's always advised as well with your dogs, make sure you keep them on a leash because if they chase after a goanna, like a big lacy, it's not the animal's fault, it's trying to just protect itself. So it's always advised to keep your pets on a leash too, or your dogs on a leash as well. I love watching this behavior. It's really, really cool. It's probably one of my top five favorite things to do here at the reptile park. It could probably is a little bit uh, gruesome, but I mean, this is nature at its best and it's good to be able to see the way they're working together and not trying to bite each other. They're all taking their time and they're working really, really hard to reward themselves with fairly small amounts of food. As I said, I'm gonna pull that food out in a few minutes or after this live stream, uh, and then we'll go feed the rest of it to one of our big American alligators. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna head over and have a closer look at one of our, probably the friendliest lace monitor in the world. Maybe, maybe, might be a bit biased. But Hardy is super friendly, and I thought it'd be nice to actually see one up close so we can talk about a few, I guess, really cool things about uh, monitors, in particular, our lace monitor. Now I'm just gonna grab him out, we'll come inside into the show pit where we're not doing very many shows at the moment besides live streams. We'll go over to the tree, hey? So this is Artie. Isn't she one cracker of a lizard? Now, if you all know Ranger Mick, uh, Ranger Mick's been working at the park for a very, very long time. This is one of Ranger Mick's favorite lizards. He's probably watching, so I'll just say, hello, Ranger Mick. We all miss you here at the park, especially uh, Artie and Rosie. Can't wait to see you back here soon. Uh, so this is uh, Artie, and what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna see if she'll wanna go sit up on the tree. I'm not sure, kind of, sometimes goes up in the tree and then just climbs down straight away. Uh, she's pretty good at climbing, of course, being a lace monitor, but most of the time she climbs straight down and tries to climb back up you. But you can see the way she's gripping onto the branches at the moment. Not the best example, uh, but they are quite comfortable up in uh, even the tallest of eucalypt trees or any type of tree, really. Now, a couple of things we'll look at while Ars Artie is out. They're beautiful coloration, but every few seconds, you're gonna see Artie stick out of her bifurcated tongue, which basically is a forked tongue, very similar to that of a snake. And they use that forked tongue to, I guess, locate food, maybe locate a potential threat, or even to locate maybe a potential mate. All right, you didn't like that idea, did you? We'll get you back out here. All right. I'll see how long I can hold on to her, guys, because you have very, very sharp claws, so I'll see how we go. But they use that forked tongue. It's their most advanced, I guess, sensory skill. They stick out that forked tongue, picking up any scent, scent particles, or non-airborne scent particles. And so you could imagine if they're trying to track down uh, a potential prey item or even a carcass, they just use that forked fork tongue and they'll follow that scent trail, which is quite incredible. And they literally can track food kilometers away. Now here in Australia, we definitely are the land of the monitor. We have over 30 species. Our largest is the Parenti. Our smallest is a little monitor in Western Australia called the Dampier Peninsula Monitor, or maybe the short-tailed monitor, which is Varanus brevicorda. They're both fairly small. You're talking about lizards that will only grow to around 20 centimetres. Parenti is very different. You're talking about an animal now that could be maybe over 10 kilos in weight, 
but also two, maybe two metres long. So quite large uh, monitor species do inhabit Australia as well. Now here at the reptile park, we have lots of different monitors, but most interestingly would probably be the Komodo dragon. Now the only reason I'm gonna talk about the Komodo dragon is because the Komodo dragon, one of its closest living relatives is of course the lace monitor like we're holding on to right now. I might put Artie back and then we'll come back and do some questions. Sorry about that, she just, the claws are very, very sharp and I think it was just easier if she was in the box whilst we do uh, a few questions. But yeah, if you ever do happen to see uh, like a lace monitor and you're at a national park, don't try and catch it. Of course, they're going to defend themselves by biting, but also too, definitely don't try and feed uh, monitors. That's where a lot of people get bitten because they see this friendly goanna, it's coming on, they throw out a sausage or whatever. Then that animal associates people with food. So we don't want that. It's no different to feeding dingoes. It's always best to let them find their own food. They will, and they can. Uh, so let them do that rather than feeding them because you encourage the potential negative interactions between goannas and, and people. And then people have a bad perception of monitors where it's actually not their fault. They're actually really, really cool animals. And most of the time they just want to avoid you. Any questions about that? Yeah, so uh, can they drop their tails? Can, no, so they can't drop their tails. Um, they're not like a, like a stink. Or, or some dragon lizards and stuff like that. So they won't, oh sorry, iguanas. They won't drop their tail, uh, and they use their tail, particularly even a monitor or some monitor species, like a prehensile tail. So like something like a animal tree monitor will use their tail and hang down, using that strong tip of their tail. What's the difference between goannas and monitors? Yeah, it's a really good question, and it's a question we get asked qu quite a bit. Um, people get a little bit confused by some terminology that we might use with reptiles in particular. Uh, it's no different between, people get very confused between what's a turtle, what's a tortoise, and we'll go into that another day. Jake probably covered that last week. But really, goanna is just a descriptive term we refer to our monitor species in Australia. So it's not a term generally used in other parts of the world. It's pretty much an Aussie name. Uh, it's got, well, it sounds a bit slangish, doesn't it? But yeah, we kind of just say goanna talking about our monitor lizards. So monitor lizards are part of the Varanus family or Varanidae family, uh, which is your Komodo dragons, your lace monitors, Asian water monitors, savannah monitors, you know, the list goes on and on and on. But in Australia, our 30 species, we, you see them, you call them goannas. Don't get too confused by it. Goanna's a great name. Monitor's a good name. Yeah, whatever. How old can they get? They can live pretty long. So Komodo dragons can live till they're 30. Lace monitors probably in captivity about the same. Obviously in the wild, their lifespan's probably not going to be quite as long because they have to encounter, it's a lot tougher life being in the wild than obviously living here in captivity and having food and access to veterinary care and all the rest. So uh, yeah, but about that kind of 20 to 30 mark, sometimes a bit longer. What kind of habitats do they live in in the wild? Yeah, depends on the species. So what's cool about monitors and then have various different habitat types right across the country. So we've got species that are pretty much totally arboreal. So something like a mangrove, a mangrove monitor. Uh, you've got other species that have it in the most harsh desert regions like a yellow spotted monitor. Uh, if you're lace monitor, You've only got to walk out in our backyard and you'll find lace monitors in the back of Summersby. They like that kind of skeletal forest type. So depending on where you are in Australia, you might have your own different monitor species and they do fill a lot of different niches right across the country. Some just basically inhabit cracks and rocks and um, some live underneath bark on mulga trees. So it's really, really cool how little monitors will fill different niches. Do they have ears? Yeah, they did. So uh, one thing that differs them from, you know, a lot of people get with snakes and lizards. If you look at a snake, they won't have any external ear holes, but monitor lizards do. So it is covered by a scale, um, but probably about this far on Artie's, if you go back on the video, this far behind Artie's eyes, with little black slits on the side, and you'll be able to pick out the ears quite easily. What are the differences between boys and girls? <laughs> Artie's trying to escape over there. Hang on. Artie, get back inside. <laughs> okay, back to me. Well, one of the difference between boys and girls, uh, um, well, females lay eggs, <laughs> but also too, for our male goannas, uh, typically you'll have a broader head shape, sometimes some differences in tail sh base shape, but it is quite difficult, particularly if they're of the same size. So if we're going to determine sex of a monitor and they are very similar size, if they're quite young, we might do an x-ray, a radiograph, and that will be able to see some calcium deposits in where the hemipenes are. So lizards, they all have hemipenes, which means they have two penises. So you can see that on an x-ray. So that's one way we can tell the difference. Uh, but typically size, generally males will be larger than the females, particularly for our lace monitors. So you saw how big our boys were. I've seen some pretty big female lace monitors too, but nowhere near as large as some of the biggest males I've ever seen. And last question, can they swim? 
Yeah, monitors are actually amazing in the water. So we have some uh, monitor species in Australia in the northern parts, like the Merton's water monitor, perfectly adapted for swimming. Even their tails almost paddle shaped. So uh, when they glide through the water, and I've seen most monitor species. Just hold there two seconds. <laughs> We're just gonna let her walk around. Just had to shut the gate. <laughs> <laughs> so professional, right? Uh, yeah, so they are very good swimmers. Uh, you know, even Komodo dragons can swim. So excellent, the way they move through the water. But if you look up Merton's water monitor, we actually have one at the reptile park. Sometimes when we feed, well we do, whenever we feed the Merton's water monitor, the Merton's and the turtles are all down feeding together. It's actually really, really cool. We so might like, wrap it up there. We might wrap it up. I'm gonna go pick up Artie and then take her back up the top. I hope you enjoyed that live stream. Uh, there's plenty more videos coming throughout the week. I think there's like one on skinks on Thursday. There's a death adder one. So tune in, lots of fun, Elvis on Wednesday. Hope you're enjoying the live streams. Can't wait to have you back at the Reptile Park. Maybe soon, who knows? Keep We're keeping our fingers and toes crossed that we'll have you guys back here shortly. Hope you enjoy that, guys. See you later.